Good morning, and I hope that you're having a uh, terrific Tuesday. Uh, this is Jeff. I'm here to give you a, um, a video lesson on Lesson 10 from Unit 1 in the Illustrative Grade 8, uh, Illustrative Mathematics Grade 8 curriculum. And we're going to today kind of go over the lesson and talk about the practice problems for Lesson 10. And uh, this one here is sort of an extension of uh, material that we've already talked about, but we're going to use a few more rigid transformations to kind of get some more properties of triangles in this lesson. All right, so here we have a triangle, and our job here is to reflect this triangle. Uh, I'm kind of viewing these three steps here. Reflect this triangle over line AB and label the image of C as C prime. Now, to do this, uh, the best way we know to do this is just to make some, uh, do, a, do some tracing paper. So if we trace this triangle and then use AB as our mirror, what would we see on the other side? Well, it turns out that if we do this properly, and emphasis on if we do this properly, um, by reflecting uh, this whole triangle ABC to be over this line, we're going to end up with a triangle. Uh, and then that's going to, I'm just going to kind of show you here, uh, we're going to get a triangle that kind of looks like this. Okay. And again, pardon my uh, inaccuracy with using the line tool, but we're going to get something that looks kind of like that. Okay. When we reflect this properly. And again, what we do here is with the tracing paper, here's our triangle fold over AB, and then this would go over here. We're going to call that C prime. And I know I'm kind of going over my directions here, but it is what it is. So that's going to be C prime, OK? Now, our next job is to rotate this triangle around A so C prime matches up with B. So just picture this for me, would you? If I were to take this triangle, this new triangle here, and I were to rotate it all the way around until C prime lines up with B, what do you think is going to happen? If your answer is this triangle is going to overlap this triangle completely, then good job. You have a good visual sense from this lesson already. This is where the triangle will end up. And C prime, sorry for my not straight highlighting, drawing with a mouse is fun. Um, it turns out that this triangle will overlay this triangle completely. Okay. So what can we say about measures of angles B and C? Well, here's the thing. If I overlay this triangle, remember, this is our image of C, right? And I know it since it's a reflection, this angle C is the same as this angle C prime. So if I go all the way around and C prime matches up with B exactly, then we would say B and C happen to be the same angle, okay? Because C prime, our image of C, matches up with B exactly. So B and C originally are the same angle. So since they are the same, that kind of tells us a little bit about isosceles triangles. And uh, you might say to yourself, wait a minute, isosceles, what does that mean? Well, here's a triangle. Notice that the side lengths AB and AC are equal. So in an isosceles triangle, or what an isosceles triangle is, okay, is a triangle with two sides the same length, right? So when I have an isosceles triangle, it turns out that not only do I have two sides that are the same, I also have two angles that are the same, okay? And just for a little bit of, a little of an extension, these two angles that are the same, we call them base angles. You don't have to know that now, but in case you were curious. Now, here we have another triangle. We have triangle ABC. Our job here is to draw midpoint M on side AC. You may say to yourself, what's a midpoint? Okay, well, if you said that, a midpoint is a point that is in the middle of a line. So AC, if I measure this and I put a point right there, let me draw a little thicker. If I put a point right in the middle, there you go. That's pretty close. Okay. That would be my midpoint. So I'm going to label this point M. All right. I may want to show, no, I can do that. All right. So there, there's point M. Now here's the hard part. We're going to rotate this triangle 180 degrees using center M to form a new triangle, CDA. Um, draw and label this triangle. Now, we're going to label the new point D instead of B, OK? So now, help. So work with me on this one. When I rotate this, let's rotate. Let's use the points as, a, as, as sort of a guide here, OK? If I rotate point C along point M, that means that this whole segment is going to flip all the way around. And the distance between these two is going to be the same. The same thing goes with A. When I flip that around, that's going to be exactly the same. So this whole segment, since I'm using the midpoint as my center of rotation, this whole segment is just going to turn completely around. So like C would be over here, A would be over here in, in this you know, sort of imaginary scenario. Okay. But B, 
on the other hand. Well, when I rotate that around, that's going to go all the way around here, and I'm going to end up with uh, a point. Let's see if I can actually use a guideline to kind of help me with this. Let me use a dashed line. I'm going to go from B through M, and I'm going to extend all the way just about here. Now, you may say to yourself, well, what am I doing here? How am I doing this? Well, remember that when I rotate a point, I rotate a point along some sort of center of rotation. This segment right here is going to flip all the way, and using 180 degrees, by the way, all the way around to the other side. And the distance of this point that I end up with is going to be exactly the same as the distance of the original point to the center of rotation. So that point D is going to be right about here. That's our new point. Okay. Now, if I were to, of course, since I'm doing this to the entire triangle, I still, of course, want to sketch these lines in as well. Uh, they're using blue, so let's see if I can have a close match to that. I think I do. So here's point C. That's pretty good. And here's point A. All right, so close, but not quite. That's all right. You can work with me on this. Uh, what kind of quadrilateral, what kind of quadrilateral do I now have? Well, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. What does this look like to you? Well, if your answer was a fancy word, parallelogram, then you have the correct answer. Okay, this entire quadrilateral is now a parallelogram. Now you may say to yourself, how do you know it's a parallelogram? Or what is the properties, or what are some of the properties of a parallelogram? We can answer that in a future video, but understand that in a parallelogram, the opposite sides are parallel, and they are also the same, okay? Because remember, when I rotate a segment, a rotated line, 180 degrees, and I get a new image, I end up with two parallel lines, okay? And again, pardon my, uh, my drawing ability. I know it doesn't quite look like it's parallel, but again, work with me, all right? It does work out to be a parallelogram if you take this rigid tr uh, transformation of this triangle and rotate it 180 degrees, compose those two triangles, and you end up with a parallelogram. Okay, now, um, here we have an isosceles triangle, O and E. The sides O N and O E have equal lengths. Angle O is 30 degrees. The length of O N is five units. Reflect one tri triangle one across segment ON and label the new, new vertex M. Well, we kind of did this already with our opening, um, but let's go ahead and do the same thing. If I wrote using ON as my line of reflection, if I take this triangle and flip it around over this side here, I'm going to end up with a segment that's going to kind of look like just about this. And again, trying my best to be somewhat eh, pretty good. That's not bad. Okay. And uh, label the new, new vertex M. Okay, so we'll do that. Here's our new vertex M. What is the measure of angle M, O, N? Well, if I just reflected this, remember, ref reflection is a what kind of transformation? Well, if you said rigid, good job. That means that this angle here is going to also be 30 degrees. Because, again, if I reflect a triangle, if I reflect a triangle, I end up with the exact same measures in, of all sides and all angles. So M, O, N is going to be 30 degrees. Okay? Now, because MON is 30 degrees, now you may say to yourself, well, what about MOE? Well, if I look at MOE, M-O-E, now we're kind of taking this whole thing in, in, together, right? Well, I use the word to kind of clue you in as to what the ang angle should be. If this is 30 here, this is 30 here, that means this entire thing is going to be 60. Okay, so MOE is equal to 60 degrees. Now, our next job is to reflect triangle MON across segment OM. Label the point that corresponds to N as T. Okay, so once again, here we go. Now we're gonna use OM as my mirror, and I'm gonna reflect triangle MON. Well, OM as my mirror allows me to, let me change the color just so you can see the difference, allows me to now have this as my triangle. Looks something like that. Okay, just about. That's pretty close. All right, Laura corresponds to NST. Okay, we'll do that. This is good notes, by the way. Hopefully, you're writing this down. If not, go ahead and rewind and uh, maybe take some notes, notes down. All right, how long is OT? Well, again, this is a rigid transformation of a rigid transformation, so OT should be five units long. How do you know? Because of you, you had performed two rigid transformations. What is the measure, what should the measure of angle TOE? Again, you gotta work with me on that drawing here. My drawing is not perfect here. Um, it should be 90 degrees on this, and I'm looking back at my re reason why it doesn't work out that way, my, my drawing, but it should be 90 degrees, 
okay? And again, not to scale, but 30, 30, and 30 does equal 90. And if you continue to reflect the triangle in this way, what will the pattern look like, okay? Well, let me update my drawing just so it can kind of reflect, be uh, reflective of that. So let's take this, let's see if I can adjust. Am I gonna allow, is it gonna allow me to adjust it? No, it's not gonna allow me to adjust it. So let's, let's just do a quick one, okay? Let's do this, draw those angles out there. Uh, let's take this, delete that, that, oops, not the whole thing. <laughs> uh, that and that and that. Okay, and let's just kind of do it this way. Uh, first angle would rotate this way and it would kind of, not quite like that, but then again, it would look like this and this next one would look like this, okay? So again, not to scale, forgive me, um, but it would kind of just give you the idea what it, would, what it would look like. I like my first drawing a little bit better, even though the angle was not the same. So I'm gonna put that back. <laughs> All right, but this pattern, what would it end up looking like? And uh, you kind of would, could or should see that you have three here, you'll end up with four, five, six, seven, eight. You'll end up with an octagon uh, of pattern of some sort, uh, which, which, makes, which makes some sense. Um, actually, would it be an octagon? Hmm. No, I don't think it would, well, one, two, three, yeah. No, it would be, it, it would be an octagon-like uh, pattern. Um, but again, if you were to reflect that, what would that pattern look like? It would be kind of something like that. Okay, now, there are some practice problems that go with this lesson. And I just want to kind of gloss over some of the tips and tricks on how you can answer some of these questions. Here's a design for the flag of Trinidad and Tobago. Describe a sequence of translations, rotations, reflections that take the lower left triangle to the upper right triangle. So your answer could include rotating this triangle here 180 degrees uh, along this, maybe this point that's inside of this uh, triangle, this, this little parallelogram right here. That might actually get it to overlap, and if not, you can uh, translate it to overlap it. Getting it to have the same orientation as this is sort of key to do that. So rotation followed by a translation would be fine. Here's a picture of an older version of the tri a flag, excuse me, of Great Britain. Rigid transformation takes triangle one to two, another one takes the one to three, another one that takes one to four. Uh, if you were to measure the lengths, and of course you have the paper in front of you to do this, you measure the lengths of these triangles, you should notice that the measurements are exactly the same. And then that in turn should allow you to answer the uh, side lengths of triangle three without necessarily having to measure. And then the question here says, do all eight triangles in the flag have the same area? How do you know? Well, again, if you look at these four triangles here, do these appear to be rigid transformations of these? And your answer should be no. These triangles do appear to be a little bit larger. Therefore, these would have more area than these four triangles, okay? So again, if something is different, that means that a lot of things are gonna be different about it. Okay, uh, this one here, I kind of cut off the first question here, I apologize. Uh, but the question does ask you to trans, uh, sorry, not translate, uh, to explain how you can translate, rotate, or reflect line L to, I'm sorry, so I'm, no, that was just the uh, heading. I just cut that off, that's okay. Uh, explain how to translate, rotate, or reflect line L to obtain line K. Well, uh, you should notice that line L and line K are parallel lines. So because they're parallel, you should be able to translate line L to overlap line K perfectly. However, for line L to line P, that's gonna require a kind of different run. You're gonna need to do some rotation first before you can translate it on. And matter of fact, if you rotate this, using this intersection point as your center of rotation, you can actually do it in one rotation instead of having to translate it. Any other point, and you'd have to do a translation to get that on there. And uh, two problems that go with this. Problem four is a uh, coordinate. Point A is three, four. After a translation of four units left, a reflection across the x-axis, followed by a translation two units down, what are the coordinates of the image? What I recommend for you is if, if this is not, if, if you're not comfortable working directly with the coordinates, I recommend you plot this point and perform these transformations as explained. Move it four units left, then reflect it on the x-axis, then move it two units down and give me the coordinates of that image. Again, visual would help here. Here's triangle XYZ. Describe three rotations of this triangle. If you rotate XYZ 90 degrees clockwise around Z, let me give you a quick visual of what that would look like, okay? 90 degrees clockwise would put, and you're using point Z as your, as, your, um, uh, as your center of rotation, what would you end up with? Well, by doing this, you'll end up with this particular shape here, just about. Again, again you might wanna use the tracing paper in front of you to kind of get this particular thing exactly, but you'd end up with something like that, okay? And then this would be your X prime, this would be your Y prime. 
and then do it again, 180 degrees, do it again, 270, you'll end up with a cool looking shape. Okay, so that kind of covers it for this lesson right here. Again, these practice problems, if you're in my class, these practice problems are due tomorrow. Make sure that you hand them in to your substitute if you're done today, and you'll have no homework for tomorrow. Okay, and uh, stay tuned this week. We have a project coming up, and we'll talk about that in class tomorrow. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and don't forget to be awesome.